We first had Logan diagnosed. We lived in South Carolina and we uh, took him to an ENT specialist. Uh, Logan had a lump in the side of his neck. He was in the winter time and he was playing football for the rec center there. And he was at that age where boy's body's starting to make changes and things. And so the first thought was that um, it wasn't a big deal. He had been sick on and off since December, and they were in the process of moving to Florida, and really no one knew what was going on with him. He just kind of had a lump in his neck, and he went to the surgeon and had this little lump biopsy, and everyone thought it was going to be nothing, and told him, oh, don't worry about it, we'll call you if it's anything. And unfortunately, the surgeon called me and said, you know, I saw this kid the other day, and I thought it was going to be nothing, but unfortunately, it looks like he has lymphoma. And I can tell you from that second forward, I didn't really hear much else after the C word. <laughs> My son was in the room, his stepfather was in the room. It was very emotional um, and at that time he told us that we just needed to grab everything that we had in the room with us and go over to Arnold Palmer Hospital. That within two days a port was going to be placed, that's where he'd be taking his chemo, that he would be admitted to Arnold Palmer um, for the first four plus days. Um, and I just remember it being so much information at one time that I just walked off and went into the bathroom and crashed to the floor <laughs> and just said, why us? When a child's diagnosed with cancer, for the child and the parents, it's a complete shock. I mean, for most people, they don't even think that kids can get cancer. For the rest of the world, cancer is pretty rare in children. For us, unfortunately, who take care of these children every day, it's common. We had no plan of our son having cancer. We had a plan of going home that day, and all of a sudden, everything came to a halt. We had no family here. Uh, we had just moved away from all of our family. We had a few friends that we had made and a few friends that I had known from previous years that we had to call on, and all of a sudden, our schedule became Logan's schedule. If you've never had a child that had cancer, you really don't know what to expect you hold on to little bits and pieces that they tell you when you come to the hospital, things that may help your child along the journey, and they kind of tell you some children do lose their hair and some children do not lose their hair. Logan did end up losing his hair. So the first morning that my son came running to me in tears telling me that he was losing his hair, um, he was already hysterical. Um, I just remember the lady saying something about the lint roller brush and I took my son in the bathroom and literally rolled off a whole layer of hair from his head. It's really hard when a child loses their hair. Um, that's their um, security, I guess, so to speak. So um, we always had white pillowcases on our pillows and um, Logan um, requested that we get him dark pillowcases with patterns and I wasn't quite sure why he said that at first until I realized that a dark pillowcase with patterns on it, you don't see your hair when you wake up in the morning. Because we were new to the area, Logan had only been in school for three months. He was in sixth grade and he was just meeting people and all of a sudden, um, he was the kid at school with cancer. When a child is diagnosed with cancer, a whole family is actually diagnosed with cancer. It's a whole family whose lives are completely turned upside down, really, Intense treatments, there's a risk of them dying, and this is, this is obviously completely overwhelming for a family. Um, it's, it's, it's really shocking, there's no other way to put it. I decided when we moved here, because we were on the beach, to surf and get lessons. Logan didn't know. We did not tell him. All of a sudden, there she's like, well, you'll be picked up by a limo. <laughs> now, I had five out of the six children, Logan being the sixth one, that stood at the window for an hour before the limo got there exploding, <laughs> waiting for it to pick us up. Logan is a great kid. I met him a while ago and never knew that uh, he had any form of illness. And um, once I did, and he was part of Make-A-Wish Foundation, I actually approached the family and said I'd love to be a part of uh, this. Um, it's great. It's a great um, charity. Well, this is the logo that uh, Logan chose and designed. 
and uh, I change up just a little bit to fit in the, uh, the SALT logo and everything. But that's Logan's own design. I just kind of uh, embossed it a little bit, put a little border around it. And he came up with a little bit of a saying on one part of the board. Life is too short to wait. I think Make-A-Wish is an unbelievable gift that is um, given to these families. Like Gary said, to um, keep your mind off of it. Well, my wish felt granted, felt good. Yeah, we just want to thank you all very much. This thank was you. really awesome. <laughs> Logan received his first surf lesson this past weekend and was able to get up on the board the first time. So they said he's got some kind of natural instinct. <laughs> as far as Logan's wish being granted and how it's affected him, I feel like he feels like he's kind of catching up to everybody else in our household now, um, that he's not being singled out as the special one in a negative way, um, that um, he feels like he's one of the kids again. The staff, the doctors, the nurses, and everything that comes with Arnold Palmer Hospital is untouchable. There's some days where it, they're pretty dark. They're setbacks. They're put back in the hospital and they don't expect it. They, it's, it's, it's a big struggle for them. And um, we're very, very lucky to have an organization like Make-A-Wish who can come in and change really these families' lives by giving them something to look forward to. I usually kind of start talking about a wish when I see a child struggling and reaching a point where they're just, they're frustrated or they're just feeling some despair over what's going on and say, you know what, hey, look, there's something we can think about. You can actually think about a wish. You actually get the power to make a wish, something you want, not anything anybody else wants, but something you want, something that you couldn't have otherwise, and you get to think about what you want, and, and that often just like puts a huge smile on their face, even in the darkest time. Unfortunately for many of the kids we take care of, they may not live beyond the next couple weeks or months, and their wish is a chance for their family to spend time together. For Logan's sake, we are one of the lucky ones. Um, we got to walk out of Arnold Palmer. There's a lot of kids out there that um, make a wish is our last happy moment. So if anyone ever wonders uh, who they could donate to that would make a large impact, um, that one last moment that a child might get to spend with their family with a smile on their face, it's definitely a very, very good cause.